What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're going to look into one of the most powerful tools in Lightroom but also the most complex ones, the tone curve. Now in the tone curve you can do several things. You can do things from correcting the exposure of an image to underexpose it to make it a lot lighter and create some contrast and some faded look effects like in the moody look you can achieve it in the tone curve but also you can apply some colors to achieve certain styles. Now, in several tutorials like how to edit like Monaris, like Pau Clavero and Luis class, we use a tone curve to achieve certain looks and more specific colors in your images. So particularly when you're first jumping into Lightroom as a beginner, it's quite intimidating to look at the tone curve and not knowing what to do with it. So first we're going to explain it, see how it works, and then we're going to use some several images to create certain looks and how I'll show you how to achieve them in particular guys. So let's jump into Lightroom. So here we have this image guys and the first glance we can see that it's very underexposed because I shot it at 1 over 4000 of a second and here in the histogram we can see that it's very underexposed. Now the histogram basically everything to the left it meaning that the image is underexposed. If we move the exposure up all the way down to the right we can see now that it's overexposed. What we want is an image that's correctly exposed with peaks in the highlights and also in the shadows something like this guys. Now all of this we can do it in the basic corrections with the general exposure and contrast tabs. Also we can do it more precisely in the highlight shadows whites and blacks but also we can do it in the tone curve guys. So we've already seen what we can do with the overexposure tab. Now here we can also do it in this part. Now in this part without the point basically we can move the shadows up, the darks up and the lights and basically we've already exposed the image and as we can see the curve has been modified. So this is a tone curve basically like in the histogram over here. Here we can see the overexposure of the image and over here in this corner we have the blacks at the bottom and the whites at the top. So this point represents the highlights of our image or the highlight row of our image and down here the black row. Then we can see that it's segmented into squares guys. Now these vertical lines control the darkest parts of an image, this one, then this one controls the shadows, then this is the midtones this is the highlights and this is the whites. As we can see, they're the same things that we have over the basic corrections. So let's say that this image, we want to correctly expose it. So for that, I'm just going to select a point in here in this line, which is the shadows and a point over here, which is the highlights. Now, what we want to do is drag them up to brighten them up a bit more. So let's drag it up. And as we can see, the shadows are starting to be lifted and everything is a bit more exposed. Now if we want to correctly expose this. We're going to move the highlights also up over here, something like that guys. And it looks just like if we move the overexposure tab at the beginning. So here we can correctly expose an image. Now another thing we can do in the tone curve is achieve certain looks or specific styles in particular. So first of all, I'm gonna go over here to the basic tone curve. And in this one, what I'm gonna do is just correctly expose the image. So I'm just gonna move up the highlights, the shadows, the blacks and everything in general to correctly expose it and then I'm going to click over here once again and in the point curve, the RGB curve, here we can add our style. So let's say that we want to add a faded look effect like in the moody look. I already did a video on how to edit a moody style, I'll link it up here. But let's say that we want to add a moody look. So we want to add some contrast, in this case I'm going to put a point in the shadows. I'm going to drag it down to make them a lot more dark, a lot more punchy. And in the highlights I'm going to do the opposite and drag them up to make the highlights pop a lot more and to create this contrast. Here we can see now the, that the image is very contrasty. Now if we wanted to create a faded look effect, I'm going to drag the point that controls the black parts of our image, just drag it up. And here we can see that it's adding that faded look effect. Now this is a very punchy look. Another way to do it is moving the basic corrections. We're going to move the shadows down and move the highlights up. And basically we're adding a lot more contrast into the image. So this is just another tab or another layer that you can add into your color grading and your editing in general. So you can add as many points as you want into a tone curve so you can move it around and experiment with the overall exposure of your image. So we can make all types of styles here. For example, if you make a U shape down here, you basically soften up all the highlights and also all the shadows, just like that. Everything's a bit more soft and less contrasty. I'm just going to pull the whites down so they're not too harsh. And basically just like that, we can make the image a lot more soft. Or in other cases, let's say that we want to add some contrast, but in this case, we want the blacks to be a bit raised. We're going to pull up the blacks to lift them up, the shadows, and then pull down the highlights to make them a lot more soft. And here we can see we can achieve certain and very stylized looks, guys. So that's the RGB tone curve. And RGB stands for red, green, and blue. So basically you're editing the overexposure of the three primary colors that compose all the colors on your image. So let's put up the chromatic circle over here. Now here we can see that the three primary colors combine themselves 
to achieve certain colors in particular and all the other colors the secondary and third colors are basically just a product of mixing up the primary colors now here we can see that some colors are in the direct opposite of the other skies so let's jump into the red tone curve over here and here we can see that the red in the chromatic circle the opposite is obviously the aquas or something like that guys so if we move this point up just for purposes of the example everything in the darkest parts of our image slightly towards the highlights is tending towards the reddish tones but if we move it to the opposite we we'll achieve that teal color that aqua color more towards the greenish vibes you can basically add all the points you want over here as well so you can achieve certain looks now the green tone curve basically the opposite of the green again if we move the highlights up for example or the mid tones up in this case everything tends towards the greens if we move them to the other side everything turns towards the magentas and in the blues well the opposite of the blues of course is the yellows guys so the tone curve is a way you can achieve certain and very specific looks guys you can also combine the layers combining the colors to achieve third or secondary colors in the image so let's say we've already exposed this image now i want to add some teal color to the shadows of the image now i want it i want to add it to the shadows but not towards the blacks so the blacks aren't affected so we remain with pure blacks in this image so for that we need to move this point down here the shadows in particular so i'm going to create a point in the midtones and also in the highlights and these points that i've added basically add as anchors so the top part of the tone curve isn't affected at all so here we can move the shadows down and basically we're adding that teal color to the shadows in general guys now if this point wasn't here you can de-click it and as we can see the curve also alters altering the highlights of our image so i'm going to add another point over here back again basically adds as an anchor and it limits the effects of the tone curve in the upper parts of the exposure guys so it's looking a bit too green for my taste so i'm going to go over to the blue tone curve and here i'm going to create again a point in the midtones point in the highlights to not affect them and then a point in the shadows but in this case i'm just going to add a bit of blue to combine with the greenish vibe that we already give given it to create that bluish tone and if we move it just a little bit up now we can see that the green or the aquas that we had in the other in, in the other tone curve and now the blues have combined themselves to create that teal color now let's say now we want to add some oranges into the highlights so for that i'm going to combine the yellows from this tone curve if we pull down the highlights over here we can add some yellows here we can see that the highlights are adding that yellow tone but also i want to add some red to make it a bit more orangey so i'm going to go all the way to the red tone curve i'm going to pull up the reds in this case in the highlights and here we can see that the reds are combining with the yellows from the blue tone curve and achieving that orangey vibe so that's a great way you can achieve certain looks guys so the tone curve is great to achieving certain looks in particular but it's not very precise guys because it depends on the exposure of your image so let's say that you want to alter a color in particular let's say this blue on the sign you would have to go to hsl and alter it individually by moving the slider you can't do it from the tone curve so it is limited in that manner because it depends on the exposure of your image so as i mentioned before guys you can use the tone curve as another layer of exposure or correcting the exposure you can also obviously still alter the basic corrections over here then you have a second edit on the exposure which is the highlights shadows whites and blacks a bit more specific then you have the rgb tone curve and also you have the overall exposure in the tone curve without points so this is how Lightroom works. You can add a lot of layers into your editing to make it a bit more complex. Just like in color, where you have basically the saturation over here, then you have the HSL, then you have split toning, and finally you have camera calibration. There are so several layers of editing that you can use or you can just skip if you want to. Now here we have another image of Danny. And let's say I want to apply some black and white, but with some color to it, some tint, like a sepia tone or an indigo black and white. So first, what I'm gonna do is select V, on our keyboard and that alters everything to the black and white palette and then i'm just going to add and correct the exposure of this image so for starters i'm just going to pull down the shadows pull down the the whites just a bit because it's a bit overexposed and the highlights just like that maybe in this case i will add some clarity just to make it a bit more punchy i don't know why black and white really works with with clarity and then i'm going to go all the way down to the tone curves and let's say i want to apply a sepia color to this black and white so I'm going to go to the blue tone curve, just select a point in the middle, in the midtones, and drag it towards the yellows. And it's looking quite nice, guys, but still, I'm going to add in the red tone curve, just going to pull the reds up to combine them with the yellows from the previous tone curve. 
to make it a bit more orange. And there we have it. But just like that, you can achieve a sepia look. Now, let's say that we want to achieve some indigo. We're just going to pull this point over here towards the other side, basically just like that. And there we have an indigo black and white. So that's the tone curve, guys. You can achieve a lot of looks and a lot of specific styles with this tool in particular, but it also needs the complementation of the other tools like HSL, split toning, and all those other tools from Lightroom. So it's a very tedious tool and quite complex, guys, but it's a great tool to have in your arsenal for editing, guys. So that's about it, guys. If you made it this far, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Remember, you can support me in many manners and ensure I don't starve to death. You can buy my presets or lots in my online shop, which is linked down below. Also, you can join the channel membership where I give away some of those presets each month. Anyway, guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.